James, thanks for coming. Yeah, no worries, Gareth. Nice to chat. Yeah, it's How great to see you here in uh, in New York. Yeah, and the view is incredible. It is. It is. Yeah. We picked a special point. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is our Very office. impressive. Very yeah. impressive. We, uh, it's obviously uh, an inspiring view here, but uh, how does it feel to be in New York? Yeah, um, I've been back and forth a lot over the last couple of months, so it's, um, yeah, I think you'd, you'd share that sentiment that it's a really energizing um, place to be an entrepreneur, yeah. uh, to try and build a business over here. You just have such a, yeah, there's just an energy and a dynamism that I really enjoy personally, and I think um, any entrepreneur who comes here could only be but inspired 100%. by the... Yeah, just the buzz. The, the buzz. Yeah, it's hard to do. it's hard to kind of yeah, it's just something. It's a feeling. I think you yeah. walk down the street and you get it. You know. So after I, after I a week, it. after a week being here, uh, yeah. is it is it giving you more life to come back or totally? Yeah, yeah, no, totally. As I say, the business, our business, um, Pep Talk, we're you know we we recently just launched our US office. I'm going to be hopefully coming here full time in the new year. So yeah, really exciting. Uh, nice. And it's uh, yeah, it's where we want to be. You know. 100%. I can only speak from experience and like uh, business since since we moved over has yeah. it's been a good move mm. for us and I suppose you know a lot of people always compare Ireland to America and I think that's yeah. really unfair. Yeah. Because America is just a different beast. Yeah. It's a huge market. Yeah. You know, and for what you're doing with Pep Talk, I think sky is the limit, yeah. you know, and yeah. people are very open to talking. Have you seen that? Yeah, I think there's a yeah, there's an openness there's potentially maybe, I think, U.S. companies. There might be a sense that they want to adopt technology that little bit quicker than back home. Yeah. You know, there's, yeah. there's maybe, a, maybe just a level of autonomy or a level of innovation that might happen over here that you mightn't see to the same degree at home. But also yeah. just to sheer volume of companies, Gareth. Like right. I think in Ireland, uh, in terms of what we do, there's only like, um, I think it's over just roughly over a hundred companies with more than a thousand employees yeah so if you play that out for a company like us that and we want to sell into companies of of scale and size right. ultimately this is where we need to be this is where the market is and we're lucky enough already to be working with companies such as you know northern trust verizon global payments Boom. all of which have big big presences here so yeah i love that it's exciting to be able to connect up with them on the ground here as well so for me uh, leading it out um it's exciting to have those existing customers that we yeah. can expand into and develop relationships with over here 100 percent. yeah um tell me about this start like how, how did you get started with it all yeah so i suppose i was a lawyer a solicitor um 10 years ago were you um yeah i was a Jesus. lawyer yeah smart gossip well <laughs> i don't know uh yeah i i kind of fell into it i didn't really know what i wanted to do did law um then I did commerce in the UCD, and then I did law. Uh, so um, yeah, I I think still it, it gives you a bit of a good grounding, uh, even yeah. though I don't practice it. It kind of maybe you think about things certain ways, and yeah. maybe with a bit of logic and rationale. And it, yeah, I, I find it um, much and all now as I'm not the person to be giving legal advice on stuff. It's still <laughs> yeah. nice to uh, to have to that. have it. Yeah. yeah. So then you're um, looking at things in a slightly different yeah, way. Yeah, I guess so. And I have had that entrepreneurship kind of bug I suppose yeah uh, wanted some wanted to do something and then initially ran a I suppose a brand and marketing company called legacy which nice. still exists and, and pep talk then was a was something that as we talked to senior leaders there was this whole focus on teams on culture on leadership yeah and um, I was lucky enough to play a little bit of football GA with the Dublin team um, with me and my one of the co-founders Bernard and yeah. I'd seen this, uh, you know, how do we get a one percent edge? And I think, I think for most organisations, that's one of the most transferable things between sport and business. It's, yeah. it's about you're, you're you're competing all the time. Right. And how do you get your team focused? How do you engage them, motivate them, inspire them? Uh, and I think there's a there's a ton of different themes that run from sport into business. And I guess pep talk absolutely right now is. Is that's where we that's what we landed upon. It was this idea of, you know, people are old, you know, businesses are are people basically, yeah. and if the people are inspired and engaged, you are going to get the extra one percent from them. So how do you get that at, at scale and in a sustainable way? So yeah, it's a great. Like, it's a great name. Yeah, it's a good name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it now with the from the sports background. Yeah, so and talk, it's, let's, it's let's pick it up another percent. Yeah, let's get after stuff. Yeah, exactly. And I think it resonates with people, and it's easy to understand. And I think right now in the world of work, 
obviously over the last number of years there's been a ton of change I guess yeah. there's still a lot of uncertainty and I think um, everyone needs a pep talk now and again everyone needs that bit of uh, encouragement and engagement and if we can play a role for organisations in, in supporting them through what is a lot of change for companies um, you know be they coming into the office be they working from home yep. most people going through whatever the hybrid type environment mm. like building a culture in a hybrid environment is tough uh, I think most people would recognize that. So that's incredible. We want to we want yeah. we want to play a role in building trust. We want to help develop psychological safety in teams. Yeah. So as we can kind of create an environment for people to perform at their best. So yeah, just through building habits, building behaviors. You know? And it, it strikes me that you know now is probably a golden time, a golden age for for you at Pep Talk, and that communication is so important. Yeah. And having that Pep Talk. It has never been a more vital time for businesses and yeah. you know leaders of business I see it myself yeah uh, having to a team spread across yeah uh, two different continents having that ability to yeah. uh, give them that pep talk is 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 super important right I, now more than ever big time I think uh, for leaders um, it doesn't have we don't have to overly complicate it like for us um, you know sort of our platform helps ultimately t organizations understand morale within their team, yeah. energy within their team, how engaged we are, and then designs programs in service of that. So you're trying to close what we t describe as this insight and action gap where sometimes surveys, great to do, but hard to act upon. And right. then similarly, sometimes hard to get programs or action going without an ins you know, without, you know, you want to develop relevant programs as well. So right. there's no point, a one size fits all program, be it wellness, be it something around culture, CSR, you want it to be relevant to the end user. So I think for us, for, as, a, as a leadership team, um, creating an environment just to have positive conversations, yeah. and, and, but being, being then informed by our insights, so you're able to go in and have a conversation every, every month, say, and say, guys, it's coming up on our scores that we're a little bit burnt out this month. Yeah, you know, what's yeah. That about? interesting. You know, and I yeah. think Love that. having that as a conversation point in a, in a team's meeting, yeah. that's, that's ultimately what I think employees are looking for. They're mm. looking to be acknowledged, this idea of their leader caring about them. Yeah, you know, that, that it's now, massive. It's huge. And I think that's where data and insights can just create a better conversation. Oh, and, and at a team level, yeah. then it's like, uh, yeah, then that's what builds psychological safety, by being mm. vulnerable and having a conversation about something that, it's just giving people an, ena it's an enabler. It's just mm. enabling a better conversation. And, and it, like in terms of, I just keep thinking to my own, uh, situation in that now post covid people are probably working more hours right so yeah. you know in the hybrid environment people are on their phones more like mm -hmm. i you know i'm kind of embarrassed to say how many times i've been on phone uh, on a saturday or a sunday yeah. you know uh and i think there's that balance starting to really be in super important of like understanding yeah saying thank you yeah. yesterday i sent a message to our tech team just saying thank you yeah because i know they're going above and beyond right yeah. so that's so important i think yeah. nowadays and if your platform does that it's pretty i think uh, it's just an, it's just yeah it's just um and, uh, enabling it what you know? what uh what made you leave legacy like is that's a that's a business that's still going today what gave you the the it was idea it was really to, it, it was to be honest it was probably this it was it was legacy is a great business and i'm very proud to yeah. have set it up but it probably doesn't have the because it's not a ultimately a software platform, it's yeah. harder to scale. And you I think myself more, and more, Bernard wanted more something that was bigger yeah. and more global. And yeah. you know, this is what we're here for. Really. This type <laughs> of view coming yeah. after the business over here. So yeah, it, it was nothing. Big, it was big, nothing against legacy. The it was global really business. Just, it was a global. Yeah, yeah, ultimately, it was to build a global business, Man, and obviously and the, trying to underpin that with technology. Which I think I know. I, I met yeah, you a few years ago that. in your, I think in your it was in your crust days, uh, yeah. and I know that was probably something we shared, that idea that this is great, but there's probably something bigger and better. Yeah, my, my last business, we shared that, that we both had left a business to start this, and I might, the food business and leaving yeah. the food business to, you know, the reasons why where technology is changing the way everybody yeah. lives, yeah. and the global impact capability is enormous. Yeah. And, like, I get very excited to see yourself here, mm. sitting here looking at this, you yeah. know, when we were sitting in a coffee shop in mm. Dublin, yeah. having a, a cup of coffee, talking yeah. about our big ambitions. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. 
like it's it's fantastic i'm seeing more and more like yeah. post covid there's entrepreneurs in in ireland especially are looking yeah. and i think across the world are seeing new opportunities to expand globally yeah it's being able to sell online mm. now through zoom has opened this doorway yeah. to people to just go after yeah. you know the big markets yeah, yeah hasn't it yeah totally and i know i think you gareth in particular are a great connector of entrepreneurs in ireland you've done a great job in bringing that community together Cheers. you know so i wouldn't underestimate the value in having an ecosystem of people who can go on the journey with you i think that's yeah. really important because uh, you don't let's be honest neither of us have all the answers here yeah. you're trying to figure it out and you're making mistakes and you're learning and yeah. growing and i think by having that group of people who you can bounce a ball at uh Love it's important. It. Uh, Have a pep talk with. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. we, we, we had, uh, people always ask me, um, you know, the connecting piece. And one of the things that drives me is, like, I get energy from hanging out with other people like yeah. yourself. Yeah. And I always found it interesting in Ireland, specifically Ireland, because that's where we grew up, I suppose. It's a very competitive uh, mindset early days for mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. It was like, oh, you know, trying to yeah, compete yeah. with each other. Yeah. And for me, I never actually saw that. Maybe because my mom is American. Yeah. I had this, like, why are we competing with each yeah, other yeah, here yeah, yeah, yeah. on this small yeah, island? Yeah, yeah. Like, the world is a globe. Yeah, like, it's huge. Yeah. And I never, everyone. Yeah. yeah, I never had that competitive mm -hmm. mindset with other entrepreneurs. It was always like, yeah. how can we help each other yeah, get yeah. the big cheese, yeah. which is the global business, yeah. you know, yeah, and, and help each other up. And one of my icons is Michael Dell. And when he went IPO, you know, like a thousand plus employees became very yeah. wealthy overnight and that's to me yeah. exactly what it you know it takes a village to build these Big businesses time. yeah yeah and i'd love to see lots of people do yeah, really yeah. well yeah, yeah it goes for like people like yourself and other entrepreneurs who you know if we can all help each other there's Big a time. better chance of us oh, well, yeah because there's you know. always learnings and some of it's uh, some of it can be really practical things but yeah on the money and for me like i love seeing other entrepreneurs succeed um it wouldn't be I, i've had to go on a journey to to build those networks myself and been helped by people like you to be honest and connect me into other people but um yeah i i think the more you can kind of be vulnerable and, and open to those type of conversations ultimately you're going to get to a better place you yeah know? yeah 100 um, percent. just taking a different tact so yeah. move, move into new york like what would you think uh like what's the big challenges you're looking at like you're trying to face and trying to solve for um, for those who, who yeah, might be interested in doing the same yeah like i think um so i'm so i suppose while i'm ceoing pep talk i'm also a dad and uh, two young kids and a wife and i suppose some of the challenges are very kind of just personal in terms of figuring out all yep. those things and i think it's really important to get that stuff um sorted in the right way because i yeah. don't think any business is going to succeed unless you have the right setup in terms of your own lifestyle mm. so i think that's really important and mm. then for me yeah listen we as i say we're lucky enough to have some us customers already so we're looking to to grow them yeah and um, the challenge is i suppose then going from them and, and building out the next 10 customers so right. on the ground I'm the, I'm the first person here planting the flag but we'll be supported by the team in ireland the likelihood will be we'll start hiring here on the ground in the yeah. next six months as well which is quite exciting so i suppose um getting that kind of and i think to be honest like just being uh, um, managing your expectations about what you can achieve within mm. the first six months. Like even that's kind of what I was curious when I asked you, you know, what did that first six months look like? Because yeah. I think you can It's chaos. It's it's, it's <laughs> yeah, and it's it's look, let's be honest, it's it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. You yeah. can't like I think there's a there, there's this piece I'm here, I just gotta run around all day, every day, and it's not sustainable and you'll burn yourself out. So right. I do think that's what I was curious in particular for you because i think it's a similar path like that first six months what did that yeah. maybe I even i might ask you that question like what was that reflecting back now did you was it did you feel that it was just a bit of a whirlwind or would you do things differently Absolute or, whirlwind. Yeah, yeah. like I, I would say the biggest the biggest challenge is the unknown yeah right yeah you know we're coming from a base of ireland where you're familiar with everything yeah every street corner yeah. <laughs> nearly yeah. every second person and you're only two, <laughs> right? you're only two phone calls away from connecting with anyone you yeah know? so it's and good. and there's a huge support base and i suppose you don't have that as much in in yeah. new york now i was able to call on like there's great irish network yeah. uh, here so that was very helpful um there's a there's an irish network in new york people can look up as well okay um but for me, honestly, I got great advice on this early on. 
um, where I was told basically, look, your job is chaotic enough. Yeah. Your base has to be stable. Yeah. Because if you have both yeah. uh, variables, yeah. you just, your brain yeah, just yeah, yeah, can't yeah. deal with so many moving plates yeah. for very long. Yeah. Uh, exactly. One two weeks is fine. After that, you're just sort of you need that yeah. like routine of going to the gym. Oh, yeah. To, yeah. to set steady you. You won't deliver for the business, I guess. Will you? Yeah. One hundred percent. So what we did early on was. Like I um, picked a location yeah. uh, downtown New York yeah. and uh, basically said, "This is where I'm going to be." Okay. Right? Yeah. And I'll tell I'll tell you, I just picked the New York Stock Exchange because I have a vision of going public in America. <laughs> nice. I like <laughs> so it. I said yeah, I'm yeah. going to literally get yeah, as yeah, close yeah. to that <laughs> as possible. <laughs> and uh, thankfully, it an easy trick. Yeah. You know, the world works in mysterious ways. I literally moved into a building next door to the New York Stock okay. Exchange. Uh, got a great deal, COVID deal. Yeah, they don't yeah. exist anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but when I moved over, New York was still just coming towards the end of the COVID yeah. saga, and uh, rents were cheaper. Yeah. Now I picked a location and then uh, went all in to to make it happen. Great. There's a few cool things like um, you have to build credit in New York yeah, to, yeah. to get it. So I've been told. Yeah. 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 But there's tips like um, if you go to guarantors.com, okay. you can, as a as a immigrant, you can basically say you cover my credit. So if so, you pay like a thousand quid or two thousand, depending on your rent. Yeah. Uh, you pay them, and then they give you the credit. Okay. Of uh, backing, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you yeah. can you can get past these hurdles. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, but I think the key is like set your goal first, yeah, and say here's where I'm going to be, yeah, here's where I want to be, and then just you'll make it happen. Yeah. You know, you're yeah. a driven guy. Yeah, yeah, you're going to make it happen. I think one of the, many of the things, the challenges right now are, you know, rent being higher. Yeah. I think it's a mindset change. So mm-hmm. people say, how much are you paying in rent? You know, yeah. rent is not uh, is ridiculous in New York. So yeah. you're going to end up paying higher, yeah, than anywhere else in the world. Yeah, but the chance of you meeting other yeah. entrepreneurs or investors or clients is yeah. just enormous. Yeah. Like before we just chatted, we met two other entrepreneurs yeah. who just raised money here yeah. in New York, both Canadians. Yeah. And you know, those uh, those random meetings could lead into an introduction to their investors or know. their clients. Yeah. yeah. And that sort of stuff and proximity doesn't happen if you're in the middle of you know, I don't even want to say, yeah, but uh, yeah. if you're in the middle of nowhere, basically, yeah, it's yeah. very hard to get, to get that. that. Yeah. So you're paying extra, you're yeah. paying a premium, yeah. but you're in the mix. Totally, yeah. Um, and I think you bring that, that even on the, in, the, in the short time I've been here, you're exposed to a, a level of innovation. And when you meet other entrepreneurs, you meet business leaders, they're, yeah. they're on that same wavelength. 100%. And you can, you can benefit from that and carry that, carry that dynamism and innovation then into whatever you know i, I want to kind of bring that back to my business and bring that energy and bring that innovation yeah. and just that can do attitude yeah and i think yeah so I, I think being here allows you to to kind of just raise raise the standard yeah uh, and then obviously bring that whether you're you know whether i'm going then traveling around the us i, I think it gives me I'm, I'm hooked into a really strong hub mm. here from an mm. innovation perspective, which is really from my perspective, I want to be able to go to our customers and, yep. and new business leaders and talk about what's right at the cutting edge of, 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 the, of that area. And I think being here gives you exposure to a level of thought that yeah. um, and is be, very exciting. Being Irish gives us such a huge advantage. Like I, I can't stress this enough, but you know, every single zoom call it's like oh where is you you know you're, you're from ireland yeah, oh brilliant yeah. Yeah. and you know it's a good and every big client as well wants to come to ireland gives yeah, you yeah. Yeah, an yeah. upsell opportunity you know <laughs> yeah no <laughs> and, totally yeah. And, and i think like that's the beautiful thing is like new york presents irish people a great opportunity to do both like yeah. you can fly over we have colleagues who've who who come uh, to meetings and it's five hour flight is nothing. Yeah, uh, a lot of people don't realize. You know, it's five and a half hours to LA from New York. Yeah, and it's five yeah, yeah. and a half hours, six yeah. hours to, to Ireland. Yeah. So it presents this huge opportunity of like a proximity where you can have two bases. And yeah. We have we have the Dublin office with a great culture and a New York office with a great culture now in building. Lawrence, did that die? Did it? We stopped for a short coffee break there, James. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah.
But uh, yeah. sponsored by Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we wish. Like they need it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. number one podcast yeah. in the world. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, but uh, no, we were just talking about like I think uh, in the in the interval there about hiring and yeah. one of the things that uh, we've found is you know hiring uh, a team based in Ireland yeah. uh, and hiring a team a smaller team based in the US, you can take advantage over the economies yeah. of of. Uh, the economics of it and, and in that uh, living in New York is very expensive. So the f- having a big team here as a smaller company doesn't make sense. Yeah. And you can utilize the benefits of a yeah. team based in Kilkenny or in yeah, Dublin yeah. or yeah. whatever, uh, selling into uh, yeah. the US. And I think having beachhead uh, offices in the West Coast yeah. or New York, that's sort of our strategy yeah. where we'll have uh, points yeah. contact success managers over yeah. Uh, these regions mm. but actually in, in the sales team people love talking to Irish people and I think yeah. like there's no loss in yeah. having a team Who based are. in yeah. Europe and in and in I think Ireland. as well I'm sure you found this it's nice uh, for companies of our size that the those kind of employees who are there early in they carry your culture and they carry the standards so it's great to be able to give them it's very exciting to your point like we, you know the New York office um, and the opportunity for your cur- existing team to be part of that journey and yeah. potentially come over. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that's very exciting as well. So um, certainly for us, yeah, I, just cur- I was just curious how you found the, the hiring and talent kind of stuff over here, you know? Yeah, it's, it's like there's so many talented people everywhere. Yeah, yeah. You know, I actually, funny story, uh, just hired a guy in Brazil. Uh, okay, well. when I was over in Brazil at a wedding right uh, wow. who's Irish okay <laughs> so uh, <laughs> right. Dan gets a shout out yeah. uh, today but uh, met him in a in a coffee shop and heard him speak and I was like you're Irish as well yeah got chatting and he wants to remain remote working great yeah. right and so this new world that we live yeah. in gives you a chance saying to... okay well look you're in a US time zone yeah you have years working with Salesforce years experience so yeah, you kind of fit the bill. Yeah. A little bit different that you're living in South America. Yeah, yeah. But why not? Yeah. Ownership is a core value that we have at yeah. Away Leaders. So it's like, you know, you can't, uh, you got to trust that people are going to give their all, you yeah. know. And if they're going around, yeah. farting around doing something else, yeah. I mean, it's going to be found out eventually. Big time. And then, you know what, it didn't work out. Yeah. But you kind of, I believe anyway, have to have that level of ownership. Yeah. Um, in this day and age yeah. and hire people that's who have that. back to the, what we talk about a lot in pep talk it's like trust ultimately you got to trust mm. and if you trust uh, and it goes both ways uh, then as you say the talent pool that you can right. potentially access is huge because huge. you're prepared to now like with anything if you know um, freedom and responsibility you, you want to kind of get that nice balance where if you want someone to work from Brazil you're obviously then going to give him a certain level of responsibility and yeah. deliver and that's all good but that's how trust is ultimately created so I think yeah, uh, yeah I think the new world of work and and, and, and um, the talent pool you can access and then as you say but it sounds like things for, for way leader the, that trust piece and having that as a straw as a strong component of your culture yeah. allows you to kind of have the ability to maybe yeah, hire in a way that maybe other companies don't because they don't maybe have that kind of trust underpinning what they're trying to do. Absolutely. Well, James, time's up. Yeah. It's uh, thanks, thanks for a quick chat. I love chat. It again. I love the view. Amazing. Yeah. It's been uh, uh, it's been a pleasure, again. man. Right. Cheers. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Good cheers, to see man. you, man. Yeah. yeah that was you. great. Yeah. Um, what's the plan for the rest of the day? 